trying to develop down here. Matter of fact, we did our first concert a little further down. It was called the Ronda Cars Event Center, uh -huh. which is just right down the street. And, um, you know, we had the big band, you know, the big band, a 16-piece orchestra and everything that I was telling you in the interview we did. Oh, the, yes. The concert. Yeah, it was really beautiful. And, um, I mean, it was just like magic. Because, you know, I mean, we really wanted to get that done for so long. And finally, I, I wasn't even really getting get it organized until we got here in Las Vegas. So that's when it all, everything was put together. So we knew that we were in the right place. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Do you have footage of that? Oh yeah. Okay. It's, on, um, it's on YouTube. Excellent. Mm -hmm. A little story about Ron DeCar. So he was a showman here in Las Vegas for many years. And he had been talking about starting your own opportunities and building up. So he, he bought a, um, a, a chapel and he performs as Elvis and he marries people as Elvis. Oh, okay. <laughs> at the chapel at the Ronda Cars Event Center. And it's called, uh, what do you want to call it? He called it the um, the Las Vegas, um, oh man, what was it? It was the, the, the catchphrase. The, um, it was uh, Viva Las Vegas Event Center. That's the name of it, was Viva Las Vegas um, Chapel. So he dresses as Elvis and he comes out in a pink Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and he marries people, you know, as Elvis. Excellent. So that was that's what he did for many, many, many years. And then he bought this event center, which he, you know, it was like a warehouse. He converted into a nice dinner club and everything. And um, then he opened it up to the public. So we just happened to come there um, to do a show because, matter of fact, we helped him open the place with, you know, doing our talent, show, you know, concerts and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I um, said, so, okay, well, we're gonna start doing an ongoing thing. 
So we started doing um, the, the Roy Hamilton um, uh, Remember that we did um, the uh, talent showcase there and we did the, um, the, the Roy Hamilton Legacy Continues show with the, you know, the 16 piece orchestra. So we did all that there, you know, during the whole time. And um, it was really nice. And he finally, finally ended up after when COVID hit. And then for two years, they were like shut down or whatever, and, you know, and he, he decided to sell it. So he ended up selling it. But uh, it was, it was, you know, really nice. But like I was saying that we, you know, we had to, um, to, 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 to do what we make up, create our own opportunity. Absolutely. And we, uh, we had to charge, my father's in charge. And uh, we just, you know, used the charts. We had the big band and everything and just made the show. And it was just beautiful. Excellent. Just that excellent. I'm going to take a look on YouTube mm -hmm. and um, insert some of that into this into this little brief insight into the life of Roy Hamilton Jr. <laughs> <laughs> so at one time there was prejudice here in Las Vegas, you know, a lot of president, uh, uh, prejudices mm -hmm. in Las Vegas. And, um, when Sammy Davis, when Sammy Davis was even having problems, because he had to stay all the way across town, uh -huh. and uh, he, and when he came in to perform, he, you know, he come into the door, and then, uh, he couldn't stay at the same hotel as uh, as Frank Sinatra and Dean and all those guys. Yeah, he had to stay across the tracks. Oh. So, well, you know, um, so. Um, Frank Sinatra was like, well, look, I'm not going to perform if if Sammy can't stay here, mm -hmm. you know, on this side of town with us. Yeah. You know? And that kind of opened the door, you know, for Sammy and everything and, and a lot of the rest of the black you know, entertainers. And so it, it began, you know what I mean? To, mm -hmm. Well, less segregation, less, um, you know, uh, well, prejudice just had to continue to, 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 you know, get, you know, better, you know, and, you know, because it was really bad at one time. How did that affect your father? You were saying. Oh yeah, well, my father was staying at the well. He was performing at the Moulin Rouge, mm -hmm. which was a, a partially owned black black casino, you know, uh, and um, they shut it down, you know, after a few about a year or so uh, into them opening up because a lot of the black entertainers performed there and everything, and then um, all of a sudden they decided they was going to shut them down because you know it was prejudice. And, mm -hmm. and had, and that was it. So after my, my dad performed there a few times, and that was it. And show, and that was in the 70s, uh, I mean, 69, 68, 67. And uh, after that, he, uh, you know, he had passed away in 69. Mm -hmm. Okay, here so we go. We've been trying to get my dad into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for so long. And ever since, um, let's see, 1998, we've been trying to campaign to get him in there. Uh, and actually, we haven't really heard a lot of response or, or you know, um, anything from them because it's, it's sort of like you don't really get in on your merits. But if you, if the record company, you know, backs you and everything and this and that and uh, everything, and it's easier for you to get in. And you have to buy tables and all kind of stuff that, that you know, so, okay, so that's the way you have to get in there. You have to actually sponsor yourself to be in there. Okay. Or, or the record company sponsors you to get in. Mm -hmm. And, of course, my dad didn't wasn't really under a record label, you know, before he passed away. Mm -hmm. And most people who have gotten in there had, had been, you know, constantly under a label, you know, record label, you know, major record you know, label or uh, contract. So they was able to get that done. So we've been trying for so long, but I'm thinking, well, maybe we can just do our own, um, like maybe some type of. Uh, uh, Trying to catch you, catch yeah, you with like, the Nike. Yeah, the yeah well, maybe around. like a, um, 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 some kind of museum or you know Roy Hamilton Museum or something. Oh, nice. You know that'd be you know really cool. You know, or do our own um, you know. Uh, Hall of Fame or Hamilton Hall of Fame. Yeah, create your own, isn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. you know, you, you have to make your own. Uh, uh, you know, it's like you have to be you're, you're responsible for your own rescue. You know, yeah. Really, you know. So you create your own opportunities. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. To integrate the old Las Vegas with the new Las Vegas. So the stratosphere right here next to us is like the the last of the hotels on the new side. Okay. Yeah, so we're still going down further. That's where they have uh, the Gold Nugget and, you know, the different casinos down on this end. It's a three-story building. Matter of fact, it's the old city hall. They converted it into the mob museum because, okay, the police station was in there. The You know, the city hall was in there. And you did a... Um, and I did a gig, a gig. at the speakeasy, you know. All right. Uh, 
on the ground floor. Oh, me. Yeah. The yeah. mob, the yeah. mob, the mob. You the hear mob that, Tony? You hear that, Tony, Tony, Tony? That's right. The mob bosses. <laughs> <laughs> we converted and we got the, you know, the moonshine in the basement, you know what I'm saying? Okay, you had your people there to protect you as well, <laughs> Tony, Tony, Tony. Right. All right. <laughs> the boss told me to entertain you, so I did. <laughs> I told you I was meeting Roy Hamilton Jr. This is Roy Hamilton's son. Um, and Sean, like I said, Sean is my postman and we have these incredible conversations about music and he's, in, you know, he loved your father for wow. what he stood for. Sean, it's nice to, um, to know that you're such a big fan of my dad's. Uh, thank you so much for your support and everything and supporting um, the music and my dad. Um, it's really great that Esther's here with us and everything. We're taking good care of her. She's, you know, in good hands and we just really appreciate you. Thanks, Sean. You know, just the scene, the lights and everything. And, you know, it's really nice here. And you've got some great music playing in the background. Mm -hmm. Kenny G is one of my favorites. Kenny G, he's in a league of his own as well, mm -hmm. isn't he? He's one of these artists that is sort of iconic. Mm -hmm. alive mm -hmm. because there's just so much history right. it's not that he was a singer you know musician is his own right but mm -hmm. there's so many stories around the music and around how he got to where right. he was and who he exactly. became sure I would say that um, he was such a great influence on so many people like okay influence on Elvis influence on Brooke Benton he helped Brooke Benton start his career as a singer uh, he helped uh, uh, he, um, Sam and Dave, they, they, they toured together. He toured with Gladys Knight, he toured with James Brown, he toured with Marvin Gaye, he toured with all of them. And he was actually the headliner, you know. So it's like, man, it's, it's, people don't even know it. So in, in a town like Las Vegas, I mean, it would be perfect to just showcase everything that we have, you know, for, 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 for people to know. That is, you know, it's history, you know. And that's it. Get it done now. <laughs> Get it done now. Right? <laughs> hey, ladies and gents, hey. I am with the legend, Roy Hamilton Jr. And yeah. he's just grabbed his copy of Turning Point, Your Lifestyle, Your Magazine, in which he's featured. We show the front cover. This is the spring issue. Here it is. In Vegas with Roy Hamilton Jr. Here we go. Right here, Turning Point Magazine with Esther Austin. Woo! <laughs> oh. 